Okay, one of you sent this video to me and asked if I could answer this guy. He said some of your family members are getting messed up by this uh, Tom Gowles. I guess I'm not sure how to say that. But he says the myth of the rapture. It's only 5 minutes and 38 seconds long, so we're going to watch it real quick. And uh, just show you this. This is the they're preterist. Uh, there's a lot of different systems here, amillennial, whatever. And uh, just watch what this guy does. Total deception. We are currently living in a time of rapid change. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of disinformation, there's a lot of anxiety and troublesomeness about the state of affairs of the world. And in an interesting way, the Christian world contributes to the confusion. <laughs> Which is what you're doing there, this Tom Giles guy. Um, but let me just let me say this: uh, You don't need background music if you're just telling people about the Bible. Okay, he's already right there. You can see he's trying to deceive people. Got the oh, and you see the infinite loop puts the mind into a semi-hypnotic state. Uh, state. Let's continue. There's a lot of uh, fake news about the end of the world of the tribulation, of the coming Antichrist, of uh, the return of Jesus, the rapture. But little of these things are biblically founded. There's a major problem because of this. We don't have a clear understanding as to what the Bible says about the future. We don't understand what God says about the future of man on earth what is his plan what is about to happen what is crucial is that most of these allegations most of these predictions these prophecies are founded um, on the basis of Matthew 24 uh, and uh, actually the rapture of the body of Christ is not even in Matthew chapter 24 so Shows his ignorance of Scripture, completely ignorance of Scripture. It's in the Pauline epistles. Mystery first revealed to Paul, although the Lord did talk about it in John chapter 10. But we won't go there. People like this don't understand that anyhow. But uh, let's continue. And as Johnny Cash sings, Matthew 24 is knocking at your door. The most problematic issue regarding this is that Matthew 24 has a total different history than what most Christians make it out to be. If you look at all the prophecies about the, uh, the blood moons, about the feasts of the Lord falling into a specific pattern this time of the year, at the constellations of the stars, which uh, they say relate to Revelation 12, and all these things, it creates an anxiety. <laughs> He's trying to get in on the whole September 23rd nonsense. You know, October 1st, 2017 is when this came out, by the way. And when you read it linked to Matthew 24, it brings about a very big uneasiness. Now, what is interesting is Matthew 24, if you look at the caption in the New King James Version, it says... Yep, New King James Version, New Version User problem there but the brings about a lot of confusion uh, not if you're a bible believer and rightly divide the word of truth no confusion at all jesus predicts the destruction of the temple but the temple in jerusalem fell 70 a.d 70 years after christ was born the temple was put to ruins now, this prophecy is Jesus looking at the temple, telling his disciples, I want you to be aware that there's a calamity coming. And it will come in the generation that you are part of. And then he starts... Yep, yep. See what he did? Let me show you here. This is how these people deceive people. 
excuse me, dropped my tablet on the floor there. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 3. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be here, left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay? Jesus, right here, is this statement right here that he gave there about the destruction of the temple. When shall these things be? Right there. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They were thinking it was all going to happen at the same time. And it starts a new paragraph. And Jesus explains to them about the sign of thy coming, his second coming, and of the end of the world. He elaborates on it, and he's saying, this isn't part of the thing of the prophecy of the temple being destroyed. He already told them the temple is going to be destroyed, but this lying snake here, he says, well, see, the temple being destroyed is what Jesus is talking about in the whole chapter. No, 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 no. The first two verses. I mean, you know, and, and again, brethren, just common sense here. I mean, all of the events of Revelation happened in the first century, before 70 AD. How is that even possible? John sees it, the events happening in about 90 AD. He sees Revelation happening. So these guys will have to come in and they have to spiritualize things. The, you know, the destruction of the temple of Matthew 24, the second coming, it all happened in the first century. And so technically the second coming actually wasn't a physical coming of Jesus. It was, it was the coming of the church and the millennial kingdom is not really a thousand years that Jesus rules and reigns. It's just a kind of perpetual time. And... Disgusting. Let's continue. Speaking about the temple, clearly... Um, with regard to the signs of the times that the temple would be demolished. And what we then do is we take this history from the Bible, the signs and the times and the end of the age. Yep. Yeah. It's the end of the world. See? That's why it's important to read the King James Bible because a lot of the new versions will change world to age. I'll say, what's well, the same Greek word? I think it's aeon or something like that. Yeah, but you translate it according to the context in which it appears. I'm not talking about the end of the, end of the age coming. It's the end of the world. Continue. The great tribulation, uh, the coming of the Son of Man, what we call the tribulation, all from this passage in Matthew 24. And we link it to today as if these things are about to happen. <laughs> they are, <laughs> you know. I mean, look at the news. Earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilence, wars, rumors of wars. They are happening. I mean, where was the mark of the beast in the first century? Cashless system where all people were required to take a mark and worship the beast in his image. See, they have to spiritualize all this stuff. And Matthew chapter 24 as well. When did the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place? The whole world worship him. And then we say, but this is the time of the tribulation, of the coming of the Antichrist of the powers of heaven and of nature shaking the world. But the sad thing is, all these things already happened. They are way past. They already happened. They are way past. Yeah, if you're you know, off your rocker, <laughs> if you're nuts in the head, uh, no, they didn't already happen. I mean, again, look at what he's really doing here. He's calling Jesus Christ a liar. These things didn't happen in the first century. They had to spiritualize all of it. Jesus isn't talking about spiritual type of things. He's talking about real things that will happen at the end of the world. But you got to believe him because he has background music. And with that background music, boy, that just, you know... Just kind of gets the brain to melt into a, just a goo where you just sit there and go, you know, 
and he isn't telling you, you know, hey, just let me show you the scriptures here and stuff like that. Hey, get your Bible out. Turn to the book of Matthew 24. He's not telling you to do that. Because then you'd spot him for being the wolf that he is. Let's finish this up. If you read in Jesus' own words, Matthew 24, um, verse 34, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all of these things take place. Yep. New version. It's not what the Bible says. But see, now he's going to tie this back to what goes on in verses 1 and 2. Dirty, stinking, treacherous little trick. Jesus is talking to the disciples about the destruction of the temple, verses 1 and 2. And then he gets into, he elaborates on what they asked him about. The sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about this destruction of the temple there. Dirty trick. A generation is about 40 years. It has a duration of 40 years. This was spoken in 30 AD. 30 plus 40 years, one generation, equals 70. The temple was demolished in 70 AD. What is crucial is that we get an understanding of God's agenda for the time to come and align your life towards that specific agenda. If Amen. this video excites you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The information is at the bottom of the screen. There is so much more exciting revelation to come. Uh, please tune in. There looks to be some occult type of stuff there too. Kind of an interesting thing there because you have Mother Earth, Father Sky connected by trees. <clears throat> Witchcraft, essentially. But we won't get into that. As above, so below. Notice the mirrored images. You know, like that. But that's all conspiracy stuff. Let's not talk about that. But uh, stupid nonsense. Oh, everything, all the, all the events of Matthew 24 in the book of Revelation, it all already happened. Okay, then why is it that we can see that stuff being fulfilled right now? Where's the millennial kingdom? thousand year reign of Jesus Christ physically on the earth according to Revelation 20 where's it at I mean, common sense people come on but I see this stuff in the comments you know and I, I can't stay ahead of some of the, the stupid nonsense in the comments so whatever but it just don't fall for this stuff brethren okay that's gonna be it thank you for watching